So welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for the Voices of Inclusion speaker series. Uh, you're here with Best Buddies in Pennsylvania and we have folks from Best Buddies in other states across the country. So we're so excited to have you all with us. Um, today's topic is Down Syndrome Awareness. So we have some special guests, but we also encourage you to share your perspectives and your thoughts. We're going to have a little bit of info sharing in the beginning, then we're going to have some specific questions that we're going to pose to some of our experts in the room. Um, and then we'll definitely open it up and we can do a little Q&A. But along the way, if you have a thought you'd like to share, feel free to drop that in the chat. My name is Millie Prothro, and I'm the Director of Programs and Operations for Best Buddies in Pennsylvania. I also want to introduce my colleague, Andrew. Um, go ahead and tell him who you are, Andrew. Oh. Hello, everyone. My name is Andrew. I'm a program manager for community engagement. So excited. Love this topic. And thanks, Millie, for bringing us all together. Yeah, my pleasure. Awesome. All right. Well, Andrew's going to give us some good tech support. He can uh, keep an eye on the chat if anybody does have questions along the way. Um, quickly, before we introduce some of our guests and dive in, I wanted to share uh, a PowerPoint um, just to go over and give everybody a base of knowledge of what we're talking about today. So just give me one moment to do that. If I, if I can. I just wanted to give a quick shout out. We have our other PA colleagues, Hillary and Sam here. Oh, so. I didn't see that. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to give them a shout out too. Thank you All for right. being here too. Awesome. Thanks for doing that, Andrew. Let's see. Let's get our ducks in a row. Okay. So can everybody see that? Andrew, you be my guy with the nodding. Yep. We're doing yes. good. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. So October, as we mentioned, is Down Syndrome Awareness Month. Some people like to say Down Syndrome Acceptance Month. I just like to celebrate my friends with Down Syndrome this month. I have a sister, Jenny, who has Down Syndrome, and that's really what inspired me to join the Best Buddies team. Um, and I'm super passionate about just making sure that all of our friends with Down Syndrome have every opportunity that they deserve. So I'm sure some of you feel the same. But when we're talking about this, what is Down Syndrome? So let's think about that a little bit. I'm sure we all have some different ideas about that. But I wanted to share some of these facts with you. So Down syndrome is a genetic condition that occurs when an individual has full or partial copy of an extra chromosome 21. And what are chromosomes? They're the things that make us who we are. And so um, that affects somebody's appearance sometimes, their cognitive development, their physical health. Um, but knowing that, it doesn't mean that everyone with Down syndrome is the same. Everyone's an individual and nobody wants to be defined by a diagnosis or a label. So when you meet one person with Down syndrome, you've met one person with Down syndrome, right? So Down syndrome gets its name from the doctor who did a lot of research about it, John Langdon Down. And he was the first person to kind of recognize and do a lot of research on the common characteristic. But like we said, uh, that looks different for everybody that has that diagnosis. So each year, about 600 babies in the United States are born with Down syndrome. So that means about one in 700 babies. So lastly, I just wanted to note that people with Down syndrome can lead full and productive lives and they deserve to live to their fullest potential. Everyone deserves to be included and seen as an individual, not a label. So how can we be helpful in that process? Those of us who have Down syndrome or who love someone with Down syndrome or work with people with Down syndrome, what can we all do? So that's a question I would love to pose to all of you. So give it some thought and we can share it in the chat. Um, so now I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to introduce some of the friends that we invited here today. So we have a couple of people joining us that I think can really shed some interesting perspective for us. The first I would like to introduce is Lizanne Pando. And Lizanne, I'll let you tell us what you want us to know about you, but we're really excited to have you. Um, you're from my local area here in Montgomery County. And uh, tell us how you are connected in the Down syndrome community. Well, I am connected because my daughter, Jenna Pando, who on my screen is right to my left. <laughs> Wave, Jens. Wait, she's putting a pony up. It's very important to put your pony up and not necessarily wave. Wave, Jens. Come on, lady, come on. But he, she's gonna be 23 on November 3rd. I mean, 5th. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> I gave it the wrong birthday. And um, 
and uh, and we've uh, you know we've guided and and helped her uh, realize her dreams and her opportunities to the best of her abilities, kind of what you were saying. And um, she has been a part of uh, her school, uh, grade school, high school, and she is now attending East Stroudsburg U University. And she's with the uh, director of uh, that program. It's called the SILS program. Uh, right next to her, who is Stacy Hoyt. So um, did you have any, like, that's that's how I'm connected. Sure, you? yeah. And why don't we, since you mentioned it, why don't we throw it to Jenna and Stacy just to kind of introduce themselves and say whatever they want us to know about themselves. <laughs> Go ahead, Jen. My name is Stacy, and this is... I am, I am a sophomore in East Georgeburg, um, and my fun fact about me, um, when I'm away, when I'm away for bed, and and in my in in my room and I and I fa I face time my appearance up before I go to bed. Great. Thank you, Jenna. <laughs> and Jenna, she is like she said, she's a mm -hmm. sophomore at the uh SILS program, which is stands for Career Independent Living and Learning Studies Program, mm -hmm. and it is a part of East Stroudsburg University. Mm -hmm. We have 23 students, and in fact, we have 12 students who have Down syndrome, and they are a big part of our program. Mm -hmm. Our students, like Jenna, enjoy uh, mm -hmm. all the university activities. Mm -hmm. They uh, participate in internships and audit university classes, mm -hmm. and just have a really well-rounded mm -hmm. college experience here. I love that. And I think we have a lot of our friends from Best Buddies that have participated in the SILS program. So I'm really excited to connect with you, Stacey, and to have Jenna here representing the best of ESU. So thanks for sharing that. And the other person I'd love to introduce, you may recognize because she joins us on a lot of our speaker series, is my friend from Pittsburgh, Nicolette Finello. So Nicolette, do you want to share a little bit about what you are up to in Pittsburgh and uh uh, how you're connected to Best Buddies. Let me go ahead and ask you to unmute. There we go. <laughs> um, so I went to, let's see. So I went to, went to high school and I actually graduated high school in 2015. I went to Seneca Valley. Um, and I, then I went to college at Slippery Rock University. I helped start a program called the Rock, Rock Life. Um, so that was for like individuals with different, who was differently able to go to college and have the, the experience of doing of, of going to, to college. Um, so I started out as a freshman. I lived in dorms with different roommates. Um, and I got involved with Best Buddies for six to seven years. I did Best buddies in high school in uh, 11th and 12th grade and then I went on to to the best buddies in college and different did different roles like an officer buddy director I was a friendship block captain um and then I am now working with the Pittsburgh chapter, and I am a state ambassador, a state ambassador wow. for Pittsburgh. 
Yes, you are many things for best buddies. That's for sure. I thought you were going to leave out that one at the end, but I'm glad you Ah. mentioned it. Yes. So one of the great opportunities that Nicolette has had and that many of our buddy participants have had is being an ambassador and using her awesome talent for public speaking to change people's perceptions in the community, right? Of of people with Down syndrome, people with disabilities, uh, of women, letting people know all the leadership that you have in you and showing them what's possible for themselves. So we're very proud of you, Nicolette. Um, So let's start off with a question that I'm going to pose to all of our guests that we just mentioned. Um, I'm curious to know how you have seen um, the conditions, the the, uh, opportunities for folks with Down syndrome change over the last few years. Um, I'm sure when when Jenna was born, when Nicolette was born, things were very different. And I'm curious, particularly from a parent standpoint, Lizanne, if you can share what you've experienced over the years and sort of the arc of that. Yeah, so this has been an exciting 23 years. Um, when Jenna was born, there really wasn't um, college opportunities. Um, but the, uh, the HEO Act, the Higher Education uh, Opportunity Act 2008, um, gave opportunity for colleges and families to go after federal monies for programming. So most of the programs were actually initiated um, since then. So like 2010, you see a great spike. There's over 300 colleges now that have an integrated service program. And um, I've been studying that and that's why how we kind of came across each other, Millie. I wrote an article about presuming competence and sometimes in high school, um, because this is newer, they haven't been preparing our, uh, you know, our students with Down syndrome as strongly as they should for the college experience. And so in high school, we had a very dismal experience. And in college, we're having a wonderful experience. And Jenna is just literally like growing, like phys- like even physically almost because she's so happy and she's learning and they're really working with her on her, her passions and her, her strengths. And, and it's been such a great experience. Um, thinkcollege.net is a great resource and they have a big um, countrywide map. And if you click on your state, it'll show you which colleges in your state actually have um, programs for students with uh, intellectual disabilities. And so I would imagine a lot of them also have Best Buddy programs. ESU has a wonderful Best Buddy program and Jenna has just enjoyed it. Uh, A big part of the success for um, the entire program there, I believe, is the way they use peer mentors for uh, academic supports and for social supports and um, the, their housing is uh, in a house management uh, that the parents like work out and that works out really well. Uh, I wasn't a proponent for agenda to move into the dorms so that would made me more comfortable um, as a parent because she's like she said she FaceTimes this, she's living away. <laughs> I'm like try not to be a nervous mom um, just like I was for my other daughter uh, who went away to college. So, um, so there's been a lot, like she was in a regular, Jenna's always been included. So she's been in a regular dance studio. She's been in a regular, uh, color guard troupe. She's been in, uh, special Olympics and, uh, typical cheerleading programs. Um, so she's participated in every single thing that she, she's just a really active young lady and she loves to be busy. So, um, each time, uh, we asked for, uh, Jenna to be included the programs typically found a way to make it happen, which, so that was really encouraging to me. I thought I would run into more roadblocks than we did. And um, we, we really haven't. If you see behind me, Jenna's uh, the warrior carrying the flag at, uh, here we'll go this way, I'm, I'm the opposite, right? Uh, on the field for football games. So that's her thing. She likes to do color guard and she does a wonderful job at it. Um, so those are the kinds of things that have changed in our uh, time with her lifetime. That's great. I I love that there's more opportunities. And I think the more that we see the success of them, hopefully that will grow. It sounded like Jenna wanted to share a little bit about her experience. So I'm going to go ahead and ask Jenna unmute and share with us what she wanted to say. So for best, best abilities, um, so, um, so, um, for best abilities, um, so, 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 um,
so on Wednesday night, um, I will I I wear my costume, and I will say eighties. Uh, I will say eighties girl. Um, and um and I win I win second I I win I win the second place so um so so that was fun right yes that's fun hey Jenna and Jenna, can I, ask, can I ask you a question? All right, go ahead. What What are you studying at East Strasburg? So I am doing, um, so I to be a gym teacher, right? I want to be a, a assistant gym. I want to be a, a assistant. I want to be a assistant team a teacher at our Granite Elementary. Very specific. And um, for Altman Home. But what, um, what, what are you studying at East Strasburg? What are you studying to be an assistant gym teacher? What classes? Early? No. Child development. Right. Yeah, the uh, development. And what else with that point? Finals. Your finals coming up. <laughs> no, wait. Fundamental. Fundamental. of of movement. Um. And, and where's your internship? Where's your internship? My internship, um, mine is at the child care. Child care. Um, That's very good. And the kids paint the uh, pumpkins. So can I show you mine? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, we get to see your pumpkin? Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> mm. Go ahead. Yay. Oh, hey. I love it. Yeah, mm. girl. That's awesome, Jenna. Yeah. I, I just think it's so cool. And Jenna brought up one of the things that has changed for folks with disabilities in the last 30 years. We now have best buddies, right? We're, we're doing more work to make sure everybody's included socially too. Um, so not only are there opportunities for education uh, to continue, continue, there's opportunities for people to have friends and really live a full life. So that's something I'm so happy to see. And I think Jenna froze, but I love that she's holding up her pumpkin while she's frozen. So, uh, but thanks for sharing that. I would love to throw it to Nicolette and just ask Nicolette, over the course of your school time and then your time after school, how have you seen a change for folks with disabilities? Yeah, um, I would say for myself, like going to college has really, really changed me and really seen my potential. Um, I, so my major in, in in college was early ch early childhood education so i actually did an internship that in butler in Pittsburgh called early years um and i got actually i i actually got i got hired in august um, and then they're sh actually they're shutting down because of the staff. Um, but I'll be I'll be getting tr transferred over to the 
Oak Brandberry branch. Well, I know you stay busy, so I have no doubt that you're going to continue and have lots of things to do because we certainly love having all your help. So maybe you'll have a little more free time and you can help us out. I know you're helping yes. Andrew with some of his citizen stuff in, in Pittsburgh, which is awesome. So you're really talented. And now that you have all this great experience in the college setting, you're going to take on the world now. And I love to see that happen for you. Um, so that being said, a lot of people brought up the college programs that we're starting to see. So if you have a college program that you're aware of, drop it in the chat and share that information. Cause I think one of the challenges is that people just don't know all the time what's out there. Um, so how can we kind of help people um, connect to those resources? And that's something I would love to ask Lizanne to speak to a little bit. I know you've been a part of different organizations that help parents and families connect to those resources. Um, do you wanna share some of the ones that you work, you've ha have worked with over the years? Yes. So um, some things I would recommend is if you're a parent um, and you're uh, interested in your child going to college, that you should try to go to the PDE conference um, in February um, every two or three years to see what programs are out there, what resources are out there, join the vendors, look at the colleges that come and talk. Um, they, there's free scholarships to go. Um, at patan.net, P-A-T-T-A-N.net. You can look up when they're next. I'm sure they're taking like scholarships now for, for February. Um, I always recommend that they always have the latest, what's best in and best practices with technology and with iPads and with you know colleges and everything else. So every couple of years, your child's needs change and they really keep up to date with what's going on in the state of Pennsylvania with education, it's, Philadelphia, it's Pennsylvania Department of Education, PDE, that has this, uh, this great conference for a couple of days. So I highly recommend it. You can also ask your school district to attend. Our search never chose to come, but it's wonderful resources. And I always came back with at least $150 worth of books for the teachers in their classrooms um, on what we were looking for and why we were looking for it. So sometimes it just helps because there might be some great programs that explain why when a teacher's like, I don't understand why we would do that. So um, it comes through in a voice they can hear. Um, the, your, your local Down syndrome interest group, um, ours is wonderful, Montgomery County uh, Down syndrome interest group is a wonderful group, wonderful support, family to family, very welcoming, runs great programs, um, really gives people resources back and forth with each other. And um, Think College also has a um, Facebook page, I meant to say, for families that are, have students attending or who are going to attend. Sometimes parents just come on there and ask a question like, my students, my you know, child's gonna be 16, 18, which I do now. And parents often share their experiences, which is a nice way to have an organic conversation. Um, and um, the Trisomy 21 Center out of Children's Hospital. Um, my friends and I actually started the um, Buddy Walk for Down syndrome out of Villanova, which funds that. And we, we founded the, the Trisomy 21 Center at Children's Hospital, but they have an education component. They have a lot of resources. They compile a lot of resources. They'll send you like a book of resources of what's going on uh, locally, who are great dentists, who are, you know, uh, what are great uh, studios that would take dancers, you know, things of that nature. Where's your Special Olympics office and, and how you can connect with them. So um, they're a wonderful, Children's Hospital is a wonderful resource and the uh, Trisomy 21 Center is great. And I recommend kind of getting on a docket with them and getting an appointment once a year, just even to evaluate where you are because they do medical evaluations, but they also talk to you about, do you need more speech therapy? Do you need more occupational therapy? What's your learning curve look like? Um, Jenna, um, you know, she has sometimes focus issues, but our doctor said, we're not going to put her on any medicine if she's still learning. So that was a good measuring stick. Like, when do you put medicine into a situation if you think you need to or don't need to? Or, you know, so they were wonderful resources for us. So there are some really great programs that can guide you along the way that you can, you know, do fun family things with um, to, to sponsor them and support them as well. Um, but they'll bring out speakers. Uh, Down syndrome groups often bring out speakers. Uh, with and without Down syndrome, like Nicolette would be a great speaker for them. 
um, or partner with the best buddies for a program um, and things like that. So, so it's really, uh, there's a lot out there that you can, that you can use to, to guide your journey. That's great. Thank you for sharing all of those. I know you've done so much work over the years with all of those organizations. So um, if anybody has questions about them, hopefully we can work some of that out in the chat and see how people can get connected and get involved. Um, so I'm curious while I have you on spotlight. Oh, am I muted? Nope. I can hear you. I can hear you. Now you're muted though. <laughs> now you're muted. Now you're muted. <laughs> Was that a trick? Was can you hear me? Was that, yes, yeah. you're good. Go okay. ahead. Was that a test? We yes. were <laughs> um, read my lips for the rest of the time. Now, um, while I have you, I would, I know it's sometimes, you know, we don't like to talk about the harder parts or the challenges, but I think it's important for people to understand some of the challenges that folks face um, being a parent or a caregiver or an individual with Down syndrome themselves. So um, I'll start with you, Lizanne, but uh, would love to hear if anybody's willing to share some of the harder parts of the journey. Um, I, yeah, I would definitely speak to this. We had to sue the school district to keep Jenna in the classroom. Um, teachers often and school districts often try to rearrange the money in the district to, um, to be more convenient for them. And it's often at the expense of our own children. And so that cannot be their fault nor their problem. So my highest recommendation is to uh, fight that. Our school district, I was not the only one that sued them. I think five, six families after me sued them. And, um, and then they got to the point where they were like, fine, great, sue us. We're not gonna change anything anyway. So uh, those families sadly uh, moved out of the district. We won and, and we just kind of ignored them and kept moving along. <laughs> and Jenna, uh, Jenna, you know, uh, did, did fine. But um, so the challenges are that sometimes people are like, oh no, she needs to be over here to learn more. Um, my my philosophy is they can move to her. The law is that the least restrictive um, environment is the general education classroom and you have to start there. And then you have to bring resources there. And then if that is not working, you can have a conversation. Um, so just hold tight as hard as you can to being in the general education classroom. What happens is uh, when they get into middle school and high school, things change and that's okay. The teachers get nervous that they're, they said to me, she's only learning 50% of a seventh grade curriculum. I'm like, no, she's learning 50% of a seventh grade curriculum. <laughs> like you're looking at this the wrong way. Um, and what the seventh graders were teaching were her was how to appropriately text. They set up her Instagram account. Um, I said, I didn't set it up, did you? And they're like, no, we don't do that at school. I'm like, well, then someone's telling her how to appropriately, you know, and that's a social skill. Frankly, it's a marketable skill. Um, and uh, so all of that is very important when and not when, and you know, what are there, you know, uh, socially when it's allowed, when you're allowed to curse and when you're not allowed to curse is a very important lesson that you don't learn from adults. Typically you learn from peers. So uh, if you're not with typical peers, then you don't always learn the, the appropriate social uh, times to do certain things. So um, hang tight and hold tight to social interactions uh, with typical peers. Because when Jenna went to become a camp counselor at the local camp, they gave her an opportunity to do so. She walked in, eight of the, the other counselors had gone all the way through school with her. And so she was greeted with cheers and high fives and come to my team and sit with me not with looks like, what, why is she here? Because they knew her, she was a friend. It's mm -hmm. a very different situation. That's, that's why we do inclusion because everyone has something to offer and uh, everyone can be your friend. And um, not everyone's your friend because you don't, you know, it just doesn't mix that way. But um, so that is, that has been very successful for us. So the challenges are that we constantly become educators of, no, we can do this better. And when we can do better, when we know better, we should do better. My Angela, right? When we know better, we do better. And so the better we get at this, the better we can do at this. And so every day we can get better. You muted. And it would be better if we could hear you. Just Am I unmuted now? 
You're, You're good. good. Okay. I just, uh, I'm glad you couldn't hear me because I was like really excited. So, <laughs> but no, I, I love what you have to say about it. And it's, it's good to just really be invested and clear eyed about, you know, the advocacy that everyone has to do. Um, so I, I would be interested if, if Jenna or if Nicolette had any, anything to share about some challenges that they have encountered as well. Um, Nicolette, I see you nodding. Do you want to go ahead? Yes, absolutely. I, I come across tons of different challenges. I've faced so many in college that, that I've had roommates who were overbearing, over controlling, um, like being and being a mother to me. I really have one mother, and I'm that's the only one I can have. Um, it's that and trying to fit in with friends who give give you the same respect. I've I've had people at work now who just is very negative and drama and like again that's a barrier that's a that's a challenge um but i i always think positive um and i and i i thought like this is a great line to say it even though we are down syndrome that does not def that does not define us um based on who we are we are able to put our mind to anything we want to do in our lives and our future. Yeah, thank you. I'm muted, but can you hear me? I can, yes. I'm clapping. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much for saying that, Nikki. I mean, I couldn't have yeah. scripted that better myself. That's exactly uh what i think people need to understand and need to hear because what you're speaking about is that you have ability and talent and people underestimate you right yes but i think if it only takes a few minutes to realize the powerhouse that they're dealing with when they talk to you so <clears throat> excuse me i need to be muted now but <laughs> um i don't know do we still have jenna on the line she's there she has her hand raised okay yep feel free to share jenna i'm gonna try to mute myself <laughs> Okay, so um, I want to say um, that um, that um, that um, I want to say um. So, um, Jenna, what, what is your challenge? What, what makes you frustrated sometimes? What makes you frustrated? Does it make um, you frustrated if somebody's bossing you? Like that's what Nicolette was saying. Yes. Does it? Does it make you does it make you sad or, or frustrated when someone bosses you around? No. No, no, you like you think like being bossed around. <laughs> <laughs> what challenges do you have, honey? What what makes you nervous or makes you sad or frustrated? Just one thing. Just say one thing. What's one thing? Um, Maybe when people don't listen. You think so? She works better with the script. We should have given her questions ahead of time. <laughs> well, maybe Jenna's just got no challenges. Jenna's just ready to well, take on the world, right? I was even say this about Jenna. If if you have a problem, she feels sorry for you. A problem. Yeah. She definitely doesn't let it fall back on her. Right. right. Um, you know, she stands proud and and does what she does and adapts to what she needs to adapt and and brings her talents. I love it. Do you have anything to add to that, Shannon? What do you love about ESU? 
maybe we're asking the wrong question. What do you love about your life or, or issue? So mine is, um, I am happy about to stay up here. Um, you like living at college? Yeah, so, um, so, um, sometimes, sometimes I'm, sometimes I, sometimes I am nervous, but sometimes I'm not, sometimes I am Sometimes I am not. Um, sometimes I. Um, sometimes I focus on something, um, and sometimes I pay attention for my classes. Um, and, and I, I like it, and, <laughs> um, and sometimes I eat ants, um, at the calf with the sales students, um, yeah, so this is your first time you've been away from home, right? Yes, so, it is. So that made her a little nervous too, right? Being away, but you did great. Yeah, I mean, that's, can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> that's such a big step for anybody, Jenna. And it's, I think you just seem, you know, when we ask you what your challenges are, I feel like that's a hard thing for you to think about because you seem to have such a positive attitude and you're approaching mm -hmm. your life like, nothing's going to get in my way, right? I'm going to meet these people. I'm going to show them some love and they're going to love me right back. And you're going to try your hardest. And I think that's so awesome. And, and the things that you talked about that you have lined up for yourself, like an internship, mm -hmm. those are hard to get. That's so cool that you're getting real world experience that's going to prepare you for the job that you want to have. So I don't know you very well, but I really like you and I'm proud of you. Um, and I think more people need to see what you're capable of doing. So we're going to share this with more people so they know who Jenna is and uh, help the people in their lives reach that potential too. So I think the thing that I would love for us to sort of end on, on that positive note, is mm -hmm. what do we hope for the future for folks with Down syndrome or folks in the disability community in general? So I'm going to ask all of us to think about that and share it in the chat. And I'm gonna ask our guests if they have a final thought on what they wanna see happen in the future. Um, Jenna, do you know what you would like to see in the future for people who have Down syndrome? It's a tough one, you gotta think a little bit, right? <laughs> you want us to come back to you and give you a chance to think about it? muted too okay <laughs> yeah we'll we'll choose her we'll choose her okay later. well Lizanne, do you have a, an answer for that one well i mean i would like to see more programs like this right mm -hmm. um i would like to see the evolution of the programs that are uh already out there i mean like stacy said they only have the opportunity to have 23 to 30 students i'd love to see the integrated services programs be able to grow you know, to a larger number of students per school. And I'd love to see more schools take this on mm -hmm. as part of their inclusion program and their, uh, and with diversity, equity and inclusion, I think that's, that's happening. You know, there's probably programs that we don't even know about that are in the plans. Think college.net is a strong place that has been used by the federal government for accreditation and evaluation. So they're building out programs as fast as they can with colleges who are interested. So it's nice that colleges have a place to go. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to see, Je when I, when I uh, st actually stayed with Jenna for a couple of days, their house manager wasn't there. What I loved was how well the roommates helped each other. 
and I really had nothing to do. So it was great. You know, I'm like, okay, ladies, go ahead. You know, and they were really helping mm-hmm. each other, you know, here, hold this while I put my backpack on and, you know, this, that, you know, let me, you know, pull your hair up in a pony and, you know, oh, this, that. So I'd love to see Jenna like living in an apartment with some friends, uh, you know, maybe uh, some with some uh, mm-hmm. friends with intellectual disabilities, friends without intellectual disabilities, have more of a community feel so that when she's working, she does have the support to be independent for as long as she likes. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that it would be something she would really enjoy. And I think that uh, her friends would do that too. So I'd like to see more community living opportunities for, um, and more internships, as you're mentioning, right. And more opportunities for, um, for paid employment, for gainful employment. So that would be, um, I think that would make everyone happy. The families like Absolutely. myself and my husband, the, 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 the kids with Down syndrome, and their compatriots um, and the workforce. I mean, you you said it yourself. There's a lot of joy. Yeah, coming yeah. through your workforce. I mean, workforce. yeah, we, a lot of knock knock jokes. We could end with a knock knock joke. <laughs> Jenna has like a million of them, so that might be something. Oh, we'll have to we'll have to do that. Yeah, but, um, but you know, you to, to, forget, Mama, to give you a little bit of a shout out. You recently wrote an article um, that was featured, I think, on ThinkCollege.com, yes. um, and I. One part of it that struck me is just sort of the pandemic giving you an opportunity to see Jenna's educational experience and the difference when people assume she can't versus assuming she can. Can you speak to that a little bit? Because I would love to see that be a mantra and a mentality that we all adopt going ahead. Yeah, so I got a bird's eye view uh, when the pandemic hit from March to May of Jenna going to high school in my kitchen, right? So I really did get to watch her education, which, you know, very unusual. You don't usually get to watch your child go to class every day. And so I was like, wow, these teachers don't even show up. She's really only learning from her aid. Um, they tell her so much more about when she's wrong than when she's right. They, they give up on her a lot. She's sitting in the, you know, like class is over in 10 minutes. I'm like, what is this? I was, I was actually really starting to question our, our thoughts of college. I was like, geez, is she not able to do this? Like I was getting really nervous. And then, but God bless East Stroudsburg and Stacy and her crew is amazing. Um, they kept saying, no, no, you know, let's, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's try this. And, um, and so because of the pandemic, Jenna ended up going to her freshman year in my living room. Uh, and so I got to really hear professors uh, talking one-on-one with her and, and uh, her being in class. First of all, she learned technology like in a, in a flash, like I sent her this link on email and she picked it up on her computer and she's Zooming with us. Um, right. So all of her technology of uploading and doing doc, Word docs and printing and edit, just all like expanded like crazy. Um, but that was just one thing. The teachers just expected her to do it. And so she did. <laughs> You know, and so again, if you think they can, there's a better way of it actually happening than if you think they can't. It's just to your point. Right. So, um, so yeah, so it was a really interesting view, very unusual time in our lives. Um, and, uh, you know, I was grateful for the opportunity because when, when it happened and I did write this article about it, um, I've gotten such incredible feedback from parents like, well, what can we do? And it started a lot of good conversation. So I appreciate you even having this conversation about inclusion and what can we do about um, what we really need to do is start educating the educators that they need to prepare our, our children for more rigorous studying and stop separating and really give them some, some goals. Don't say they have to have everything right. You know, high school's where you need to fail so you learn how to do it better. Right. Um, well, the, that was the part that I was struck by too is that you said the confidence level you saw blossom in her and the you know she would whisper an answer versus proudly presenting for for her classes so that that's that's a lesson that not only our our educators but also all of our best buddies participants when we're matched in a buddy pair um you know don't assume that your buddy can't do the things that you can do. Um, and then, you know, that's the way we learn life skills that'll prepare us for the future. So it's such an important mindset. And I think it goes back to the very original idea of 
um, you know, when new people come into the fold with best buddies and they want to be trained on what to do, it's so hard for me sometimes to do a training because I want them to see everyone as a person first. And so treat your buddy, treat the people you're going to meet in this program as you would treat anyone else that you meet. You know, you don't know everything about everyone you're meeting every day. And we each have to take time to get to understand each other. Um, so I think that that, that article really um, crystallized that for me. And if you don't mind letting people know how they can find that. Um, I don't know if we have the link we can put in the chat, yeah, but you just put it in the chat and you just, I'll look at that. See my, my chat is behind. So <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for that. Now, Nicolette and Jenna and Stacy, um, the same question goes out to all of you. What do you want for the future, um, for yourself and others within our community? So Nikki, you look like you're ready to say something. I am. Yes. Okay. Um, I would say for me, well, First off, hands down, like the first part I would say is the education level of, <laughs> of respecting some, like res respecting us the same way. Um, I don't want people to think that they can under, uh, underestimate me and think that they can take that away or find my weakness and knock me down. Um, I think I want for myself to educate more people, but also have people to understand that this is, this is us and, and this is what we are. And like and like just like have this like to have the same respect and just be the person that we can be the best person that we can be oh Nikki you just have a way with words I'm telling you you just really crystallize it for me too and you know I think one thing I want to let you know is that you are making that future a reality with all the things that you're doing. The more work experience you get, the more people you speak to, um, the more opportunities you take advantage of, um, you're changing the world just by being yourself and showing that to the world. So high five, we'll get there, but we got to all keep working together, right? So yeah. thank you for that. And Jenna and Stacy, if you have anything you want to share about your hope for the future, feel free. Um, my hope for the future is that there, there's more post-secondary education programs out there, that more people realize the opportunities that are there for students, any student with a, a developmental disability. Um, our students come here and they thrive. They, they become independent. They're included. They, they get a, their self-esteem is boosted. It's just such a wonderful thing to, to watch and to be a part of. And I just hope that there's definitely more opportunities out there. I mean, Jen has been, you know, on campus for only three months and she's making unbelievable strides. So it happens, it's there. And I just wish, you know, more people would have the opportunity that are out there. That's awesome. And, and any last plug for the SILS program? I really have heard so many people speak so highly of it. So um, if people want to learn how they can get involved or how they can support your program, what should they do? Um, they can visit the website. There's um, a lot of information on our website. My phone number is there, so they can always call me. I'm always willing to give tours, um, to share what our program is about. So that, that can you um, Can you, for those who won't have the chat because they're watching on YouTube or somewhere. Um, can you tell us what SILS stands for? Yes, it's the Career Independent Living and Learning Studies Program. At East Stroudsburg University. Or University. Yeah. And I know there's also some other local universities that have some great programs that a lot of our participants are a part of as well. So um, sounds like Think College is a great place to find some of those opportunities too. Um, so I think, Jenna, do you want to share any last words of, of wisdom? I think they're muted again. They're muted, Jenna. Do you want to share, do you want to share your hopes, Jenna, or you want to share a joke? Oh, that's a good one, too. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. Who are you going to tell the joke to? Are you going to tell it to Millie or are you going to tell it to Andrew? Everyone. Everyone. Go for it. Nice. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So why why did the Superman why did why did the man force the toilet? Ooh. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> why? <laughs> because because it, it <laughs> because it was his, it was his duty. Ah, <laughs> a little dirty joke there. You know a joke is good <laughs> when you're laughing before you can get it out. <laughs> oh, well, there are a couple. One. Jenna, that was a <laughs> excellent. There's a couple other people who also want to share their hopes, but that is a moment of levity I will not forget. Thank you, Jenna. Um, Taylor, did you want to quickly share? Oh, can we hear him? I think you're muted, Taylor. Can you unmute? Uh, He's unmuted. He's but... unmuted. Do you have your Bluetooth on? Sometimes when my Bluetooth's on, it cuts oh. my computer mute. Uh, we just can't hear you, Taylor. Sorry. It. It's unmuted, but you need to fix your computer. Yeah. You know what, Taylor? If we can't hear you, maybe if you want to put it in the chat, you can do that and we'll read it out loud to everybody. Is there somebody else you want to do while we're working on that, Andrew? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there were a couple. Um, Ryan, you put a couple things in the chat. Do you, Ryan Hoffman, do you mind sharing a few of those? About your hopes? Sure. Um, uh, yes. Um, hello, uh, everyone. Um, um, my my hopes is um, is that um, I want to see uh, um, in the word to where where I hope that we we take the the word this out of the disability and. Uh, and just use the word ability because because uh, even though that individuals like myself uh, may have a disability but it doesn't mean uh, that 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 I don't have the ability to do anything because because it doesn't define who I am today uh, and uh, yeah, and, and and that um, and that uh, and that I want to see it, the word where we uh, where where we all embrace uh, on inclusion and uh, and have an uh, um, of all of all abilities to do uh, anything without doubters. Uh, doubt in us because because the more doubters we get the more more faded we get it's motivation ryan, right right yeah ryan thank you. thank you ryan that was awesome snaps all around i um i have a taylor's response his audio didn't work but <laughs> he just wanted to say that i would love to see more people get included and in not letting people's dreams get crushed no matter how or what people say otherwise so that's Taylor, awesome. thank you. I know Next you have to get ready for work, but thanks for including that. Thank Is there you. anybody else real quick that has like hopes or dreams? There were so many great things said that will, I think, resonate with yeah, you. Yeah, we'll forever. open it up for the rest of the time if you have questions or if you want to share yes. sort of questions. what you would like to see happen in the future. I'll be saving the chat. <laughs> okay. Yeah, please, because my Zoom is playing tricks on me. I guess it's Halloween. But uh, Andrew, cut me off if anybody wants to chime in. But before we get too close to the end. I just want to thank each and every one of our guests for sharing um, so many great words of wisdom, so much wonderful advice, sharing your personal experience, which is sometimes hard to do. Um, this has been really 
rewarding for me. I hope you've enjoyed it too. And it's just the beginning. These conversations need to continue to happen. Um, I'm sure you're all going to have them in your own communities, um, but you're always welcome to come back on here and keep talking about inclusion and all the great things that you're doing. So thank you, everyone.